Michigan playing my throat and we're going to be serving landfill to create a digital surface model. Let's fly! Here we've got everything we need. We've got our targets, some survey paint, our GNSS receiver, the drone, uh, 1.8 meter pole for our GNSS receiver, some cones for safety, and a tripod uh, to set my camera on. All right, time to hit the road. points throughout the site. Now I'm going to pull out my GMSS receiver and measure this point so that we have coordinates for our project. see we've got all of the ground control points shot in. Alright now we've set all of our ground control points and we've taken an observation with our GNSS receiver. Now the next phase, time to fly the drone. Controller. We're going to come over here to plan, 2D photogrammetry. Right here we have a base map of our site, so I'm going to set the parameters for the project. And there we go, we have our flight parameters and boundaries set up, and we can go ahead and hit start. Okay, it's going to upload the mission. Sunny out here. He's back on. All right, and the drone is going to its starting position. Here it is on the map. Flying at an altitude of 200 feet above ground level with the gimbal pointing at 90 degrees. And now we are collecting data. Last leg of the flight, so this is it. We're almost done. Now let's take all of these 
these images and process them to generate our digital surface model. All right, let's bring in all the data and check it out. I've opened up Pix4D Matic and I'm going to simply select my images. Okay, and all the images have now been added and you can see that with all these little blue dots. And we can see all the images on the right side as well. Now we're gonna define the coordinate system for this project. We are in NAD83 Michigan South, NAVD88, and Geoid18 for converting our ellipsoid height to geoid height. I'll hit apply, okay. And I'll click this little gear and change it to satellite so I can see a satellite image um, overlaid underneath my images to make sure that I'm in the right spot. All right, that looks like the right spot. There's the landfill that we flew our drone over, so we are looking good. I'll come over to calibrate. This mission was flown nadir, so I'm gonna keep the nadir template. I'll check off calibrate, and the only thing I'm gonna change is the pipeline. I'm gonna change it to trusted location and orientation because I flew this with an RTK drone, and that means I have very high accuracy geotags on all my images. All right, and this all looks good, so now I'm going to start my calibration. After the calibration is completed, I can then add ground control points to uh, adjust my data set just to make it a little bit more accurate. Here I've gone through every single one of my ground control points and geo-referenced them in the correct position for most of the images that they appear in. Once I'm satisfied with geo-referencing all my ground control points, I can then re-optimize my calibration and then I can process a densified point cloud, a DSM, and an ortho image. One hour later. Here you can see a nice dense point cloud of our entire project. I can rotate and take a look at different aspects of this project. And after combining all of the images together, we can see here is the giant ortho image. We can zoom in and see lots of detail from an aerial perspective. And from the point cloud, we can generate a surface model, creating any kind of contouring or tins that we want to with our project. If I come over to File and Open in Pix4D Survey, I'll say Start and it'll create a new Pix4D project. Okay, so my project is finally loaded in Pix4D Survey. This is the same point cloud that we had in Pix4D Matic. And all I'm going to do is come over to the gears I'm gonna de first detect all my outliers and delete them. Under terrain filtering, this is a pretty irregular shape. It's not that flat because, well, there's a giant landfill in the middle. So I'll leave this at three and I'll keep the rigidness at low. And let's go ahead and filter out the terrain. This will get rid of any man-made objects or anything that just really isn't part of the ground. And there we go, now our site is yellow and it looks like blue. And the blue points are considered non-terrain points and the yellow are terrain points. So zooming in here, I can see all these trees got picked up, the light poles, it looks like a car, a few other random spots. And so I'm gonna just turn off our non-terrain points. So we are just left with a point cloud with all of our points that are a part of the terrain. Next, I wanna simplify this point cloud, so I'm going to create points on a grid. So we'll come down here to grid of points, and we only want to create points from the terrain classification. Now I have between regular, low pass, and smart. I'm gonna just select smart. That way it's going to create the most optimal points that are going to create me the most accurate model. Z range, I can raise this up just a little bit because we do have some varying points and I want to generate 10,000 points with a maximum elevation variance of 0.15 feet. I'm going to create my grid. Okay, and the grids have now been created and zooming in, I can see all the little blue plus signs. These are all points that were created on the terrain classified points. Okay, that's looking good. I'm gonna turn off the point cloud completely so I just have my blue points, and that's actually kind of hard to see. Well, this is a little easier now, but you can see we've got all of these points, and with those points, I'm going to open up the tin menu. My tin creation, I'll do a smart edge, and if I had break lines, I could include those break lines. I didn't do any break lines because I just want a rough model. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit generate tin. 
And there we go, we've got our tin for our project. Last step, I can generate some contour lines. And there we go, now we see the contours. If I turn off the tin and the points, I can just look at my contours and get a really nice surface model for my landfill. And that's it. That is a real world example of a project that I worked on and that is how I generated a digital surface model from my drone flight. If you wanna learn more about drones and aerial mapping, check out this video up here. If you wanna learn about how to bring RTK positioning to your iPhone, then I recommend you check out this video right here.